Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March the 31st. How is everybody doing? Give me just a second and let me pull up this video. So hopefully our live chat will work today. If you're catching us on the replay, I have a couple questions today. I forgot to write them down. We're winging it today, but I do have one fun question I know off the top of my head. <laughs> we'll ask some questions and feel free to participate in a live chat or if you're watching the replay down in the comment section below. I rearranged my room yesterday. I have a different layout and today you'll actually be able to see me sewing. Yay, y'all made it. Hello, good morning. You'll actually be able to see me sewing today. I'll show you that here in just a second. I have up on the screen the uh, piece counts and measurements for the Baird Tracks block. This is block number eight of this series. And y'all, I just got done saying this on Facebook, but uh, so yesterday I said that uh, we are extending staying home for until April 30th. Yesterday afternoon, the governor of Virginia came on and said that the state of Virginia is on a mandatory stay home order until June the 10th. That's a lot of quilt blocks, y'all, but we can do it. <laughs> if you're getting tired of doing traditional quilt blocks, do know that I have a couple videos in my head and in the works for some art quilts for spring that when I get a chance to film those videos, we're going to do some other things in addition. I do have a commission. However, it's it's kind of iffy because we were waiting for shirts from school and school is closed down. So that's kind of in limbo right this second. Good morning, everybody. So, you know, y'all know this is our, a social hour. Feel free to have conversations in the chat. I welcome that. I hope you do because that's one of the main reasons why we're doing this. One of the main reasons I keep getting a wheel on my screen. I hope we're not freezing up. <clears throat> I hope we're not freezing up. Give me a second. I'm watching the video <laughs> on my cell phone. It looks like we're going good. Okay. Yes, Kim, with that many blocks, we'll have some lovely quilts. Hazel, um, I'm not quite sure what time we're going live every day. Uh, my husband, Harlan, he's working from home too because he's been ordered to stay at home and telework. So that means that he might have meetings and my schedule is working around his so I cannot give an exact time every day and uh, I wish I could but it's usually midday and right now it is uh, 11 59 a.m. on Tuesday so usually around my lunchtime is when I try to come on but that could vary <clears throat> Oh, I'm getting an error. Give me a second. I think we're having internet issues. I don't know. It looks like we're streaming slow this morning, y'all. Streaming slow. Hopefully it continues All the beauty of slow internet. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm still working on my morning voice and the pollen. Everything is coated yellow outside. <laughs> it's all yellow. Everything is yellow. Oh, it affects my sinuses. Some kind of bad. Okay, it's working okay. I've got a big error across my screen on the YouTube. We're gonna keep going. So let me show you, I think all of, or most of you probably got all of the measurements yesterday, right? At the end of today's video. 
So I just want to let you know, if you're sick and tired of doing half square triangles, there's hope. Tomorrow we're not doing any half square triangles. <laughs> and uh, yes, we're going to have an, a much easier block tomorrow with fewer pieces. This one's going to take a minute, y'all. It's not a hard block, but it's going to take a minute. I've pre-done some of my stuff. So you see the measurements here while I'm chatting and getting everybody in. We're making the eight half square triangles the same way that we've already done before. Marking a line, sewing four seams, making four cuts, and getting half square triangles, eight of them. If you want to go ahead and start doing that, uh, go ahead and do that. I've pre-made my half square triangles to save some time. So uh, let me take that off the screen and let me show you. Ta-da! So you can see me here, right? And then you can see me laying out the pieces here. And then when I take it from here, I bring it over to the sewing machine that you can now see me sewing the pieces together. Hello, everybody. <coughs> Y'all have a scratchy throat this morning. So, yes. You can see me. So, let's go ahead and talk about the pieces, right? Uh, we have the five and three quarters by five and three quarters. There's two backgrounds and then a light and a dark. So, we're going to pair those together. Then we have two light four and a half by four and a half and two dark four and a half by four and a half and then from our background color we have four two and a half by two and a half inch squares right so this is what my pieces look like we're going to set these off to the side for a minute because the very first thing we're going to do is make some half square triangles we're making 16 of them it's going to take a minute It's going to take a minute. I'm not sewing all of them with you. I've already pre-done them to save you some time. But I'll show you how to do it in case you've missed any of those videos. It's really simple. You're going to take your background fabric, right? You're going to flip it over to the wrong side. You'll take a straight edge ruler and a marker or a pencil heat erasing pencil, something that's not going to mess up your fabric, and you're going to draw a line from corner to corner and flip it around and draw a second line from corner to corner. Just like that. You'll do that for both squares. And then you'll take your background fabric and with pretty sides facing each other, lay it down just like this. Throw a couple of pins in that just to keep them in place. I usually like to use like two pins. I don't really like using pins at all, but for this, I'll use two pins. And we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam on both sides of the two lines. I'm going to do that with you so that you can see me doing that because we haven't been able to show that until now, right? So I have my machine set up with a quarter inch seam allowance. With the draw, the line that we just drew from corner to corner, I'm going to line that up to the right side of my presser foot. Again, we're using a quarter inch seam allowance. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see y'all. And we're gonna sew our first seam. We're gonna flip that around just like this, and we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
then we're going to take that off the machine just like that so there's our first two seams look you can see that yay now we're going to do the same exact thing with our other line right we're going to sew down this side Flip it around. And come back down the other side. Yay, I'm so glad you can see me sewing today. We're going to take that off of the sewing machine. Coming back here to the table, I usually, before I cut this apart, I usually like to give it a quick press. Let me heat up my iron because it's been asleep. You're going to repeat this with your other set, okay? The background and the dark. So you have a background in the light and a background in the dark. You're going to repeat this process with this pair as well. Okay. How many of you are sewing along with me live today? Say, I am. So I usually like to give that a quick little press just to flatten it out. We'll go ahead and cut these apart together. And like I mentioned a second ago, I've already pre-made mine. But I wanted to show the process because I haven't been able to do that. The sewing process. Now we're going to take a ruler and we're going to cut this apart. Yay, we have some sewing to do. Yes, I do have a question and I forgot to write them down. I know of one question off the top of my head and I'll have to think of a couple more. What is your nickname? Maybe we grew up with the nickname and we've had it for as long as we can remember. Maybe at work you have a nickname. Maybe in your sewing group you have a nickname. Uh, what is your nickname? Miss Hazel, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, Hazel. Thank you. So we're gonna cut, we're making four cuts. We're gonna cut from diagonal to diagonal. We're gonna try not to move that around and we're gonna flip it around and cut again from corner to corner. We're cutting right on the line that we drew in the middle. So that's two cuts. And now we're going to cut this block in half. And as straight as you can keep it, I like to line my raw edge up with a line on the ruler to help me cut straight. We're gonna line it up right to that middle point in our sewn seams. And just try to keep it as straight as we can. That's gonna keep our half square triangles from being a wonky the best that we can right and then we're going to cut in the opposite direction as well so there are our half square triangles you should have eight that are background and light fabric and then you should also have eight that are background and dark fabric, just like that. That's gonna be 16 half square triangles. That's gonna take a minute. That's why I've already pre-done some of them off camera. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes if you're sewing live to do that. You might have to uh, come back on the replay and watch the rest of it, but I am gonna give you a few minutes to do that.
So that's our half square triangles. And then our other pieces. Can you see that? Yep. Princess Patty Cakes. Dobbins. I like that. Hazel, not in every bite. <laughs> Share Bear. I like that. I'm so glad you like the camera camera angles. I'm so I I rearranged my room last night, which was a lot of fun. And I was saying earlier, you know how sometimes when you rearrange a room in your house and you're moving big pieces of furniture and it takes you all night to do it, and then it's finally done and you sit down and you're like, I'm not really sure I like this. <laughs> and then you spend another whole day putting it back the way it was or you leave it and it takes several days to get used to it and then you grow to like it no yesterday when I rearranged all my tables I immediately loved it so I'm really excited about it oh that's a good one Don I'm going to write that down for our second question Because I did. I forgot to write down my questions <laughs> for the day. <laughs> so as you're finishing up your half square triangles, this is where you're going to be. With your half square triangles. I want you to grab your half square triangles. And then these pieces. Again, there will be two light four and a half by four and a half and two dark four and a half by four and a half and then you're going to have four of your background fabric that measures two and a half by two and a half so that's what we have there let me move those little cards out of the way so i'm going to grab over my pieces and i want to show you we're actually going to be putting together four units. Four units will come together as a four patch to make this 12 inch block. Jeannie, that is called a leader and an ender right here. So yeah, while everybody, I'm going to give everybody a minute to do their half square triangles. I saw that we did have uh, several people sewing live and that, those are going to take a minute, right, to get them all pressed. So let's talk about the leader and the ender for a second. Uh, what this does, have you ever tried to sew together a block and your needle became unthreaded, like you lowered your needle and the thread came out of the needle? <laughs> this stops that from happening. Have you ever started sewing a seam and you got a little bird's nest and your threads got all tangled up? And then you had to cut it all apart and clean it all out and start again. This little leader helps prevent that. It also is a thread saver. Like when I sew, uh, you know, I'm only wasting, let's see, that is about an inch and a half wide. <clears throat> an inch and a half worth of, worth of thread, right? But if you're not using this and then you pull, let's say you're done with your seam, I'll show you. I'm going to do it. Let's say you're done sewing. A lot of people will pull this off to the side and cut it. And look, that's inches of thread that gets uh, wasted, right? So it also helps prevent wasting of the thread. So yes, I use it at the beginning and the end of every seam that I do. And it really helps uh, keep those stitches. It just starts sewing perfectly every time. I don't get the thread nesting issues and all of that stuff. Ah, uh, 
I've seen a couple nicknames go across the screen. I'm going to read all of that later on today. So with our half square triangles, <coughs> pardon me, we're going to make four units, okay? And I'm going to show you what this unit looks like right here. This is one unit, and I'm going to show you how to lay this out. We're going to take one of the two and a half by two and a half backgrounds. We're going to take two half square triangles, and we're going to situate them just like this, like this. <laughs> Just like that, the diagonal with the darker side should be going from right down to left, just like this. Then our four and a half inch block. And then two more half square triangles, just like this. And this is going to make up one unit. Oops, let me move that up some so that you can see that better. There we go. That's going to make up one unit. This is what the unit looks like sewn together. So to piece this unit, hello everybody, I'm so glad y'all are with me. Let's go with the second question for the day. What is your favorite food? Or no, I'm sorry. You know what? It was... Uh, What is the weirdest food you have ever eaten? Thank you, Don. What is the weirdest food that you have ever eaten? <laughs> so to piece together this unit, this is how we're gonna start, okay? We're gonna take and piece together these two half square triangles to make a two patch. Be really careful that you don't uh, mix them up when sewing them, okay? So I'm going to take this top one in this unit layout and flip it right over top of this bottom one. And we're going to sew this seam right here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Weirdest food that you've ever eaten. See that, Jeannie? We started sewing right on a thicker seam right there and no nesting issues, no skipped stitches, and uh, that's because of the leader and the ender. I'm going to give this a quick press. So there's that two patch. Remember your little darker little points should look like a flower or a bar, a bear track, right? A bear track, just like that. Your little points, you want them going up like this. So now we're gonna take this set and make it three in a row. I'll add this block. We're gonna flip it right onto the one on the left. And sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. And look, while we're still here, here's these two blocks. I'm gonna open them up right there Come over here and grab this background, two and a half by two and a half. That's our third piece to this unit. I'm going to flip it right down. And we're going to sew that while we're here at the machine. I 
I like this new setup. Lisa, please use your yellow cutting mat. Okay, all right, yes, I'll do that. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's better, thank you. So there we go. Actually, that goes like, <laughs> there we go. All right, so we just pressed this set together, the two patch, and we just sewed these three blocks together. Let me give that a press real quick. Yes, the new setup, right? The only thing you really can't see is the pressing board, but that's okay. All right, so just like that, we have these three pieces and these two pieces. At this point, we're going to piece this seam right here. This two patch should be the same length as your four and a half by four and a half. I'm gonna just turn that right on top of the four and a half and we're going to sew this seam using our quarter inch seam allowance. So let me ask y'all this. How long is your shut-in time where you are right now? Ours just changed yesterday until the June the 10th. But where you are right now, if you are under any kind of guidelines to stay at home, how long is that for for you? Coming over here, we're gonna sew this seam. I'm gonna give this a quick press. Even though this block has a lot of pieces, I think I'm gonna really love it. <laughs> so here we are. Once we've added these two pieces to the right, this seam now should be the same length as this three piece unit right here. So we're gonna take this unit and turn it right over top. And we're going to sew right here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yes, we are on mandatory stay-at-home orders until June the 10th. That just came through the pipeline yesterday. I hope y'all are using, I see lots of stuff going through the screen. I hope y'all are using this time to talk with one another because that's one of the main focuses of doing these lives, right? Hopefully we learned something, but many of us have done these blocks before, right? Uh... I'm really hoping that uh, y'all are having lots of good conversation. I get to read it all in the evening. Now I'm gonna press this seam. I already have these two pieces done. So I know several of you are uh, sewing live with me. 
So I'm going to press the seam of the one that we just sewed together. Let's take a look at that block. This is one of our dark ones. I have a light one right here. April 30th. Yeah, that was the news yesterday. And then our governor came on, the governor of Virginia came on yesterday and said, June the 10th. So I was like, okay, June the 10th. <laughs> All right, we, we can do this, y'all. I know we can do this. We can do this. So I have one more and I know I'm going to be ahead of you a little bit because I already did my half square triangles, right? Again, when we have our three patch and our two patch, to assemble this unit, we're gonna start with the two patch, flip it right down there, line up that raw edge, and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Scrappy lady, you're getting a new sewing machine. Husband of the Year Award. Yes, good for you. I just caught that. <laughs> so that gives me a great topic for a question. What kind of sewing machine do you have? You might have several. <laughs> like I was using my Singer Patchwork because it's smaller and fit better in my original setup, but now I can use my Juki. What kind of sewing machine do you piece your quilts with? So we started with the two patch that's now on the four and a half by four and a half and we can flip this three piece unit right on top. And we're going to sew this seam with the quarter inch seam allowance. This machine has a little bit more oomph than my Singer Patchwork. It's also a little bit more quiet. But I'm gonna tell you, I really love that Singer Patchwork machine. It was a workhorse when I used her every day and she did a fabulous job. So I will never have anything bad to say about my Singer Patchwork machine. She is retired for the most part. <laughs> and uh, I'm using my Juki uh, HZLF 600. Now, once you're done with each one of your four units, you should end up with a light two lights and two darks, right? There's our paw prints just like that. I'm gonna leave that on the screen for a minute so that you see what all of your efforts, the payoff for all of your efforts. <laughs> two light and two dark. I've always wanted a featherweight one day. Barbara, you have a Singer Patchwork? Yes, I love my little, I love that machine so much. Oh, I cannot wait to go back and read all of this stuff. I've had the most fun in the evenings, y'all. 
while we watch TV, I get to come back and read all of the live chat. So that's been awesome. I also wanted to say, I'm gonna give you a second to catch up. I do know that you might not be able to make this entire block with me. So just know that anytime, uh, anytime you see a block with half square triangles in it, I'm gonna do some of them off camera to save uh, a little bit of time. <laughs> tomorrow there's no half square triangles. I'm not doing anything in advance tomorrow. I had a question from Doris about my snips. So while the, those of you who are sewing live with me today, I'm going to give you just a couple more minutes. Let's talk about my snips. She asked me what I was using to cut apart my seams because my seam ripper was downstairs. It is still downstairs, even though I have a note right here to remind me to bring it up with me. I used my little snips and uh, I bought mine at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival. However, uh, I bought a replacement pair on Amazon. They do not have a name on them or I would... Oh, yes, it does. It does. Search if you're trying to find them. H-A-V as in Victor. E-L-S. And there's a number below it, 33010. I don't know if that's going to bring up these snips or not, but that's what the little handle says. <laughs> when I went on Amazon, I just typed in uh, scissor snips and uh, went through until I found what I was looking for. But they do have a little bit of a curve at the end. So you know what these are really great for? I have a pair uh, over by my long arm for cutting uh, the starting threads or cutting all, you know my threads. I have a pair at my embroidery machine that I use to cut the jump stitches because the little curve gets in really close to the embroidery. I also use these snips for trimming applique when I'm doing embroidery with the embroidery machine. I use these snips at my sewing machine to cut the uh, leaders and enders. So yeah, they're really helpful. Oh, Hazel says they have these snips on eBay as well. Sherry, no, please. Uh, I have a note. It, it's been here since yesterday. Bring your seam ripper. Seam ripper. And I've gone downstairs about 15 times today, and it's still sitting next to my, my recliner chair. <laughs> So yes, does anybody have any questions about this block up to where we are right now? If you do, put your question in all, all caps and uh, it'll be easier to see. Hevel's snip ease embroidery snips. That sounds like what it is. Miss Barbara, that sounds like what it is. I can't go over and pull that up because I don't want to mess up the live stream, but that sounds like it. Leona, yes, you're in Virginia Beach. Yes, uh, the governor came on the news yesterday and uh, issued a mandatory stay at home, essential, you know, you can go to the store, essential stuff, not like shopping at the mall. <laughs> but yeah, uh, until June the 10th. 
If you go to Wavy10 on Facebook, I think they have the live, they broadcasted it live on Facebook. All right, just letting y'all know the comments go by faster than I can keep up with all of them. Put your questions in all caps if you have them. Right here, we're going to go ahead and move on, okay? We're going to take the two lights and put them opposite going diagonally with our little points going towards the outside edges of our square or our block, right? So it just should be just like that. If you put your hand out, it should be going towards the corner of the block. And this one goes directly across from it. And then your two darker ones make up your four patch. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love that. Let's go. There we go. Yes, I could see doing a whole quilt with blues like this. Or reds, a red and white quilt would be gorgeous like this. But I also see lots of possibilities for doing this totally scrappy, right? Wanda, sometimes when I am adding half square blocks to square blocks, they do not match up and I end up trimming. Yes, you can square up your block when you're done. Most of the time, I'll show you. Let's see, let's find one that's a little wonky. I think it's this one, right? Look at that. It does not line up exactly square going across. That middle block is a little bit longer. You can square up the little extra bit, but make sure you're measuring uh, these blocks when you're doing it and you're trimming them straight. When I have a little difference like this, just to be really honest with you, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> I'm just leaving that. But you can trim that up if you want to. But yep, that's normal. That's normal, girlfriend. I don't... I've been sewing a long time and I've never had my seams always come out exactly straight. Although I know there's probably quilters out there, but look. Uh, see that little edge? You can trim that off if you want to. I leave it. So at this point, we're going to flip these blocks over onto these blocks. And we're going to sew this seam just like our normal four patch, right? We're gonna sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. And without breaking thread, I'm going to bring over this set too and sew this seam with the quarter inch seam allowance. So here's our two halves of our block. I'm going to give those a quick press. There's our first one. Make sure to stay tuned just a few more minutes. I'm going to share with you what we're doing tomorrow.
And there is our second half. Yes, I'm liking this block. I don't know if I have the patience to make a whole bunch of them, but it's going together pretty quick, right? Once you get done making those half square triangles, this block does come together pretty quick. Now we're just gonna flip the bottom right onto the top. And we're gonna bring this to the sewing machine. And what you're gonna notice is you, you're gonna notice that you have two seams right here. You have that seam in the middle and then you have this seam down here that you'll sew through. Uh, that's when I'm at the sewing machine, you'll see me pause and stop and make sure that these seams match up. And that just helps us keep our pretty little points, right? So there's our first seam. I'm gonna come down here and make sure that this middle seam is lined up. And then we're gonna match up this last seam right down here. As close as possible. And guess what? We just got to give this block a press and it's all done. Yes, I will show that seam when I'm done when I'm done pressing Mary, just to let you know my half square triangles I did not nest those seams. <laughs> so uh, those two seams were thicker, but my middle seam was nested. Let me give it a press. I'll show you the front and I'll show you the back. Oh yeah, I like that block. I don't know that I'd have a pa the patience to do tons and tons of them, but if you had the patience for it, it, it would make a gorgeous quilt. Let's take a look at that finished block from the front first. Mimsy, there is a way to slow that down. I probably still wouldn't be able to keep up with it and really focus on what I'm doing. I catch little snippets <laughs> and then I go back at night and read everything. How do you make sure you have a quarter inch seam allowance? Lorena, before I, as soon as I turn on my sewing machine, I am setting my quarter inch seam allowance. If you're wondering how to do that, take an index card and on your cutting mat, take a straight edge ruler and mark. Can you see this right here? Yeah. Line up the edge of your uh, paper onto the line on your ruler. Make sure it's good and accurate. Line up your straight edge ruler on the quarter inch, make a line, and then bring this over to the sewing machine. Line up the edge of your paper to the right side of your presser foot. This is what I do. There might be other ways to do it. And then move your needle until it lines up with the line on your paper. That gives you your quarter inch seam allowance. And then when you're sewing, make sure that the raw edge of your fabric matches up to the raw edge of your presser foot. That's what I do. Sometimes it requires, some blocks require using a scant quarter inch. And so that means instead of 
you'd move your needle in towards the edge of the paper a smidgen. I've never figured out a scant quarter inch. It's just like a, taking a hair off. <laughs> That's how I set my quarter inch seam allowance. Let me flip this block over. And that's the back. This little seam right here got turned over when I pressed it. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? You're pressing and then just one little seam wants to be a troublemaker? The troublemaker seams. So that's the back of my block. Yes, many machines have a quarter inch presser foot. Uh, Mimsy, I'm in Eastern Standard Time. So right now for me, it's 1247 p.m. On Tuesday. Some of y'all are in Wednesday, right? <laughs> I get so confused with the time difference. So that's the back of my block. You could press your seams open. I never, I never really ever do that. <laughs> my seams are always going in one direction or the other. And even pressing my seams to one side, I'm really still a very slow presser. It takes me even longer if I'm pressing my seams open. So that's our block finished for today. I know I'm probably getting finished before a lot of you who are sewing with me live. The beauty of the YouTubes though is that as soon as this video posts, you can come back and watch the replay and pause it, right? Pause it and then follow along and then pause it and follow along. <laughs> Yeah, I really like this block. I think it's going to make a wonderful addition up on my design wall with all the other blocks. Y'all, we are on, this is our eighth block. And I just found out yesterday we're going to be doing 30 plus 30, 60 more blocks. Oh, y'all pray for me that I can have the endurance to do this. But I'm thinking, yes, we can do this. We can do this. Y'all are going to get really tired of seeing my face every day, but I'm enjoying my time with you. <laughs> Let me pull up for those of you who are waiting to see what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing the Scott's plaid block. Here are the pieces up on the screen for what we're doing tomorrow. Fewer pieces and no half square triangles. Let me show you a picture of this block. Super duper simple. If you missed my Facebook Live this morning, if you make the Scott's plaid block today, if you could hold off showing the pictures until tomorrow's live is done, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Wanda, I think it's easier to do in the replay too, right? You can just hang out with me and get a good overall instruction on how it goes. And then you can do it. And if you have questions, you can go to that part and pause it. <laughs> Yay, yeah, you'll be right with me. That's exciting. That's enough to keep me going. So that's the Scott plaid, plaid block. Tomorrow's block will finish at eight and a half by eight and a half. It's an eight inch block and a finished quilt. Super duper simple. If you have 
uh, extra off cuts from binding. This block lends perfectly for using that up, right? Because we're going to have some little bits of two and a half inch wide fabric. Yeah, you'll be able to break out some bindings that you have extra after you binded your quilt. Sometimes we have little pieces left over, right? I save all of those. So you can pull those out. This block is also great for scrappy quilts because the block, the little pieces are a little bit smaller, right? You're so welcome. Thank you. Let me show you. And, now, and I like being 100% real and honest. This block is awesome. It's so pretty. It's super duper simple. I played around in a software that I have called Inkscape. Uh, I do have some Inkscape tutorials here on my channel. I brought this block. That's how I made the block that you see. But then I recreated a quilt with it. And I turned it a several different ways for a minute. I gave it about four or five minutes to try to find a layout. But then I needed to come live, right? So... This is what I came up with. I think if you turned this block in all which ways, uh, you'd probably get some amazing layouts. This was just something, this was the first one that I was somewhat pleased with. So you could make this quilt using the Scott's plaid block that we're making tomorrow. How many colors? Uh, let's see, each one of those blocks are different fabrics, although the two light fabrics look the same. I would do a different color for each one. I'm going to use a different color for each one of the pieces. So two, four, six, seven different colors. Thank you, Erlene. I enjoy it too, I really do. Jelly rolls, yes, this is great. This is a great quilt for those jelly rolls. I don't know how many jelly rolls you would need to make a good size quilt from this block, but yes, it's the perfect block for jelly rolls. I do not have EQ8, although I've looked into getting it. Vicki, hold on one second. I like a whole quilt out of that Scott's plaid block as it would end up kind of like an Irish chain. Though uh, diagonal, up with a diagonal part, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I see that. And this was just one way that I did it. I think you could keep flipping these blocks and get several different amazing patterns from them. And I'm always amazed at how you can take one block and repeat it and get secondary patterns by turning the blocks different ways. This is only one layout of this block repeated. Keep on turning them around and see what you come up with. I am using a program called Inkscape. I-N-K-S as in Sam, C-A-P-E. It's a free program out on the internet. If you want a, a quick demonstration of how it works, um, I have some tutorials here on my channel, but there's thousands of Inkscape tutorials out there that are probably way better than mine. I focus my video tutorials on how you can use Inkscape in your crafting life. Whether you are a quilter and you want to print out quilt labels on fabric, you can design them in Inkscape. Uh, maybe you are a, um, a card maker, someone who makes cards. You can design your cards and print them out or create an SVG, which is the file format for many cutting machines. You can create those in Inkscape. I use Inkscape to, I made my little block, and then I made I used it to recreate multiple blocks and put them together as a quilt.
Yes, Mary. I think it's Troy Tube. T R O Y T U B E. Troy Tube has some awesome, awesome, and lots of Inkscape videos. Miss Hazel, thank you so much again for your uh, for your chat and. Uh, Y'all are so awesome. I really love this time. We're going to get to know each other so well in the next two months, right? Yes, Amy, you can use Inkscape and create SVGs. Your Cricut, your Cricut machine, it uses an SVG to cut out your stuff. You can make SVGs in Inkscape. Your own unique, one-of-a-kind SVGs. Uh, maybe you're someone who uses your cutting machine and uh, to cut applique fabric, right? With your brother's scan and cut or your Cricut, you can create your appliques in Inkscape. All right, I'm thinking uh, there's not that many pieces to write down. The Scott's plaid block, that's what we're doing tomorrow. That's what we're doing tomorrow. There, there we go. I cannot wait to come back and read all of your conversation that we've had today. Thank you all so, so much for spending some time with me today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for hanging out with us. Many of you, depending on the device that you're watching this video, even on the replay, there's a little button. If you look for it, it says live chat. If you open that on the replay, you get to see what everybody's answers to the questions were too. Yes. Oh, yeah. I meant to change that. Video eight is for today. Scott's plaid block will be video number nine. That's confusing, right? <laughs> Yep, tomorrow we'll be on day nine. Eight days so far. Y'all keep up the good work. I've enjoyed each and every day. I'm still waking up excited to come and see you. And until I see you tomorrow, uh, have an awesome day. I can't wait to start seeing the pictures of the Bear Tracks block. And if you're on Creative Crew Group and you're heading over to Facebook now, uh, I'll be putting a link for Zoom here shortly. Okay, I'm going to go grab something to eat. I might be eating my lunch with you. I'll try not to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> all right, I'll see y'all all tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening, everybody.